past year and a half, Big Finish have been blessing us with a brand new series of 11th Doctor full cast audio dramas starring Jacob Dudman as the 11th Doctor and Safia Ingar as Valerie Lockwood, the new companion, the half-human, half-cyborg companion, as they both search for the mysterious Clara, the woman who died twice. We got, in late 2022, Geronimo, then All of Time and Space followed, then we got Broken Hearts, everywhere and anywhere and we now have the epic finale a full cast audio box set drama with four stories titled victory of the doctor we've got four stories we've got didn't you kill my mother by john dorney daleks victorious by felicia barker the last stand of miss valerie lockwood by alfie shaw and victory of the doctor by alfie shaw alfie shaw is effectively the script editor and the producer the equivalent of showrunner for these box sets with the 11th Doctor, and I think that Alfie Shaw has done an incredible job at being able to create a series of 11th Doctor adventures which feel very, very true to Stephen Moffat, where it's all timey-wimey, it's all complicated, it's all fixed points in time can be rewritten, and high emotion and high intensity, but while also allowing these stories to stand on their own to not feel like they're cribbing from other material to not feel like they're rehashes of what we've seen on screen this effectively feels like the series 7 mid-series arc that we never got on screen and it's quite notable for being the first time that in like a prominent capacity that the paradigm daleks have featured in a big finnish audio drama now what happened in victory of the daleks at the beginning of series 5 is that stephen moffat and the crew at the bbc put together a brand new set of Daleks and was hoping that that would be the proper redesign going forward but fan backlash meant that they retreated on those designs before they could even get explored we have no idea what they are and so I, what's the eternal Dalek are the drones just drones is there anything is there anything more to them the different weaponry on the back and stuff they, they they were very quickly abandoned it's why there's only like the supreme Dalek in Asylum of the Daleks and then when we next see them properly in the time of the Doctor they're just now the bronze standard designs now so victory of the doctor serves as a proper satisfying finale for the 11th doctor and valerie lockwood adventures whilst also serving as an explanation for fans as to what happened to the paradigm daleks and why they don't appear after their appearance in asylum of the daleks proper and of course, with this box set being called Victory of the Doctor, you can kind of assume that very bad things happen to the Paradigm Daleks. However, we've got the first story, Didn't You Kill My Mother by John Dorney, which is a pretty unorthodox opener to the box set because you think that they might be going headlong into the big epic Dalek conquest story. But instead, it's a much, uh, it's a much more low stakes affair where the Doctor and Valerie are not quite themselves. The Doctor is going by a arbiter called mr doctor who has no idea what the time lords or the daleks are and is working as an impartial arbiter in a legal battle for valerie and also mrs hendrix who is in this box set played by uh lara lemon arabelle hendrix who has been one of the recurring villains over the course of the span of these box sets as well who has been trying to manufacture an anti-dalek weapon however that weapon resulted in the death of valerie lockwood's mother and, and also some other stuff that has happened happened in regards to her personal timeline and her personal history so valerie lockwood is not very happy with mrs hendrix but the doctor has no idea what's going on he has no actual invested interest in the claim and even valerie lockwood has no idea who her mysterious time lord friend is called or what he looks like what's going on let's find out let's play a quick clip from didn't you kill my mother Ah, you're both back. Good to see. He says as if we have a choice. Sorry? We couldn't leave. Couldn't bring yourself to go with things still up in the air, eh? No, she means we literally couldn't leave. There's no exit. Of course there's an exit. Take the lift to the ground floor. There aren't any lifts. <laughs> yes, there are. I came up in one this morning. Well, they aren't there now. Miss Lockwood, I promise if you... If they were there, I wouldn't still be hanging around with her. Still, as much as I'd rather be anywhere else, with anyone else... Now there, we do have common ground. Progress. Uh-huh. Since I can't get out, seems like my best course of action is to wait for my friend to find me. Your friend with no name? He's got a name. And a face. That's good. I find people without them terribly off-putting. I just can't remember them right now. Oddly enough, I can't remember them either. But for me, that's quite the relief. 
The less I can recall about that tiresome meddler, the better. She's only upset because we got the better of her. Yes. Congratulations on helping the Daleks conquer the universe. Ah, now I think we're coming to the root of the dispute. Would you like the universe to die screaming, Valerie? No, no, no. I'm not some secret agent for a bunch of killer aliens. Then why do you keep trying to help them? I'm not. I've never even met a Dalek. Every weapon we make to fight, there you are, you and your Time Lord friend, trying to stop us. So there is some interesting moral discussions here about the idea of is it you know, is it a moral thing to do to basically ruin and upend Valerie Lockwood's life in order to try and stop this hypothetical Dalek invasion in the future? Um, however, while I did really enjoy and appreciate Didn't You Kill My Mother, I think that it was one of those stories that might have needed another pass in the script editing or another draft because it starts with a really interesting mystery of why do the Doctor and Valerie not really know each other? What's going on? Why is the why is the Matt Smith Doctor, this impartial arbiter who goes by Mr. Doctor, why is this strange person called Tim who is like the only other employee at this legal firm? What, is, what on earth is his deal? Uh, Tim is played by Homer Toddywaller who is also seems like he's channeling some sort of weird like Jacob Dudman impression of the Ma of the Matt Smith doctor as well they're a really great double act and I think that that uh, um, that resemblance audibly was not a coincidence it would it makes a really interesting casting there now that's a really cool mystery However, I think that they should have let the mystery settle for like another 10 minutes. I think they sort of play their hand a little bit too early in this particular story. And it also means that when the stuff starts happening in the third act in regards to how does this plan into the Daleks invasion, what's going to be happening to Arabella Hendricks and all of this stuff that's been happening with her in the background, you know, with the, the Darthinian blight, which she unleashed early on in the first box set, which is the what killed Valerie Lockwood's mother. All of the, I, I kind of feel like it wasn't quite earned in this particular story because it just held its cards way too close to its chest for the first half of the story. Still an effective mystery, still well told and well portrayed, and it adds some really interesting Dalek lore in there that I'm not going to be spoiling. And I think that Tim is a really underrated character over the course of this whole box set. But I do think that this is one where they should have maybe, if they're going to go for the really understated opener where you expect this epic paradigm Dalek reunion uh, battle between the 11th doctor and them if they, but they're going to hold that off until the second story of this box set really really commit to it but i think that they were maybe a little bit too much in a rush to get to the dalek stuff and to try and like start paying off those mysteries which is a little bit of a, it's still a good and engaging story with a great cast and a great hook but I think it really, it let, you know, it let go of that hook a bit too early. Still a really effective story. I think that John Dorney did a great job here and the cast are terrific as well. But I do think that maybe it, it didn't feel like it had that much conviction in the premise of the story. Which is a shame because it's a great premise. I, I don't quite think they knew what they had here. I think that they were... You know, it, it, it's an essential chapter because all, you know, I can't tell you to skip this one, nor, nor would I ask you to skip it. It's still really good. But, you know, it's something about it just wasn't really jiving with me. I to, to, to sound really pretentious, but yeah, I still think it was really solid. But I think that it maybe needed another draft. But what happens after that is the epic return of the Daleks, the new Dalek paradigm teased at the end of Victory of the Daleks, Daleks Victorious by Felicia Barker. Now, in the last box set, we had the friends of the Doctor and Valerie from the planet of Medruth where they were trying to save Valerie Lockwood. Minor spoilers for the last box set. Her fate is now essentially sealed. She is now her fate, her death in this time period is a fixed point in time where she has to go to Chicago in the 18th century and marry her husband, um, Hayden, played by Christopher Ragland. Um, and she's not able to marry the person who she really wants to be with, Rowena, played by Mia Tomlinson. We've got this now Dalek invasion, which is upending everything in the timeline. And they're trying to take over Madruth because it's a planet that the Doctor has an emotional investment in. What, what's really interesting about Victory of the Doctor as a boxer overall is that it is really committed to picking up the threads of the ending of The Wedding of River Song and the beginning of Series 7 proper, where the Doctor has wiped out the memories of people 
from across the universe including the daleks of him so the daleks have forgotten who the doctor is so they've been thinking for all of these years that they've won the time war and all of a sudden they discover that there's a time lord called the doctor and now we need to figure out are there other time lords are there other tardises what's going on here and he gets interrogated by the colorful paradigm daleks including the eternal and the strategist let's play a clip from daleks victorious Ever considered making a stun ray that's not quite so ouchy? <laughs> the prisoner is conscious! Oh, an orange Dalek. Never get an orange one. Do you taste different? The orange ones always taste different. No, wait, that's Smarties. Now, don't remind me. Orange. Orange. Eternal? No, that's a yellow one. Oh, I remember. You're the scientist. The prisoner is ready for interrogation. No, he isn't. Where's the tea and biscuits? How did you survive the time war? And here's the rest of them. All come to gloat, have you? The Dalek Supreme, the strategist. Oh, and there's the Eternal. Sounds important, but no one really knows what you do. Are you middle management? I am Eternal. Want to test that? <laughs> you will answer. How did you survive the time war? What's it to you? Dalek victory must be assured. Explain your survival. Victory? You think you won the Time War? The Daleks survived. The Time Lords did not. Conclusion, we are the victors. And then you discovered me. Even after everything I did, you still found me. How did you survive? How many other Time Lords survived? Of course, if the Time Lords didn't all die, I suppose you haven't really won anything, have you? Answer! I don't answer to Daleks! You will! So, Daleks Victorious is a full-on depressing war story where the daleks are essentially trying to commit genocide on the planet of madruth which is a planet where you know the doctor has an emotional stake in and of course it is the planet where valerie lockwood's uh, future girlfriend and love of her life is currently living and her future husband as well hayden are trying to mount a last ditch offensive against daleks which are more powerful than anything that the doctor has faced before because it's the brand new paradigm and they really came to win this time and it turns out that after forgetting the doctor after losing the memories of him from their minds the doctor thought it would make them weaker because they thought that my the fear of me is what's making them strong turns out it's the opposite because the daleks now think that they have no equal in the universe and are now really playing for keeps here and i think what we've got with felicia barker's script here is just the saving private ryan of doctor who where it's just now this hopeless war situation where the doctor is going to try and do his best to fight off against this new paradigm and try and also save the people who valerie wants to hold close to her heart but it's just an absolute losing battle here the daleks are incredibly intimidating very powerful and one thing that does slightly hold this story back is that it reintroduces a villain from several box sets ago that personally i'd completely forgotten about but I think that if you were to, for example, binge this box set or maybe listen to one story a week like you would a standard Doctor Who season, as opposed to, oh, this is a character from a box set from like a year and a half ago. You know, I think maybe if you were to listen to them in a much shorter like span of time, it might hit a little bit harder. But one, I, I want to emphasize, I want to emphasize that that's a subjective analysis from me and not an issue with the story itself. I just think that maybe before listening to this box set, maybe listen to the one with the yearn in it. Maybe listen to that box set. So you maybe listen little bit all caught up here but listen to that boxer anyway it's really really terrific but what happens with uh, this particular story daleks victorious is that this is essentially the all is lost moment of the box set where the daleks do become victorious because it's in the title it's a really clever wordplay on time lord victorious of course and 
it really pushes the 11th Doctor into a really interesting and quite depressing position. The final minutes of the box set are incredibly, incredibly somber, and Jacob Dudman as the 11th Doctor really rises to the task. And like, it, it honestly nearly had me on the brink of tears uh, in terms of like the performance and what, what the 11th Doctor is going through and experiencing. It really, really puts him on an incredibly low note. Uh, the music is absolutely terrific as well. This is from Borna Matosik, who you may remember did the really, really awesome covers of uh, the shepherd's boy on electric guitar and the doomsday cover he's doing audio for big finish now and he does the audio for this box set the music for this box set and it's so terrific it, it, it makes me a little bit sad that the isolated score is not available on this box set they've not made it available they really really should so good so good I did say that this was the all is lost moment of the box set. I might have been fibbing a little bit because we have the third story written by Alfie Shaw, the last stand of Miss Valerie Lockwood. Uh, and the, and the synopsis here, rest in peace, Valerie Lockwood, 6th of October, 5324. And the rest and the death date is the 1st of May, 1893. So this is another like timey-wimey uh, story, which seems to promise the, the death of Miss Valerie Lockwood, the companion. And now we do know that her death is a fixed point in time because of what happened at the events of the last box set and basically she can travel with the doctor however long she wants but eventually she is going to have to go back to chicago in the 19th century and live out her days with uh, with a husband who she does she does love and care about but she's more a slave to the web of time right now and her fate is kind of out of her hands depressingly very similar to other companions of the 11th doctor like i said before alfie shaw is doing a really great job of building on the foundations of stephen moffat's timey wimey story while still carving out something incredibly unique and emotionally impactful so the last stand of miss valerie lockwood has the doctor trying to figure out how on earth to stop the new Dalek paradigm. And while it does open with a pretty promising start in that uh, Valerie Lockwood and Rowana decide that they're going to get engaged with each other, they're going to live for the moment, they're going to live this day like it's their last. Unfortunately, the 11th Doctor has his parting of the ways, 9th Doctor and Rose moments, and decides that he's going to stop the Daleks alone because the danger, the threat is finally too great. So Valerie is going to move heaven and earth in order to reunite herself and also her new fiancé with the Doctor, but her fiancé has got other plans. Let's play a clip from The Last Stand of Miss Valerie Lockwood. Come on, recognize my systems. What are you doing? Seeing if I can get this old comms unit to turn on. I get this map app working, we can find the nearest spaceport. Good idea. We can use their comms tower to send out an SOS, get someone to pick us up when the Daleks have gone. I was thinking more along the lines of getting a ship to fly at the Dalek fleet. Valerie, no. Ah! Look, I know this is hard for you, but he's gone to save us. So we just let him die? Yes. No! I don't want him to die, but think of everything he's saving. He's giving up everything to save us. I can't. Okay, I just can't. I lost Mum, I lost Hayden, I'm gonna lose you. There has to be something, I have to do something. I can't lose him as well. Why did you give me this ring? What? The engagement ring. Why did you propose? Why do I have this ring? Because I love you. And I love you. And the doctor loved you, in a different way. We are both doing what we can to protect you. I don't need you yes, to- Yes, you do. Because you're a good person, and you'd happily throw yourself into every hell to try and make it better. It's why I love you, and it's why I will take off my regulator, drain any power supply I can find, and carry you kicking and screaming to that spaceport. We get to live, Valerie. It's what he would have wanted. I don't think the Daleks agree with you. Why are they coming back from us? They want to kill everything that isn't them. Your body's laced with a surge. Leverage over the Doctor. I thought you said the Time Lords were all dead. They are. Well, the Doctor seemed to think they are. So the last stand of Miss Valerie Lockwood is essentially Valerie trying to move heaven and earth in order to be reunited with the Doctor again and find some way in order to stop the Dalek paradigm from taking away everything that she wants in this world. So what's, what I really, really admired generally about this whole box set, Victory of the Doctor, is that it's able to build upon the foundations that have been set up over the past box sets, like the fixed points in time and the, you know, the, the fixed point of Valerie's death and all of this stuff and all of these previous 
previous relationships that they've been establishing and including like villains and characters and plot threads and these mysteries including who has been ring ringing the TARDIS phone things like that it's able to pay off those elements pay off those mysteries and pay off those character arcs in ways that are still subversive and unexpected without feeling like a cop-out that is one hell of a feat in order to it's basically string an audience along and be like this is how valerie lockwood dies but also surprise us with her fate in the end and surprise us with what happens to the character while still feeling true to the character giving us these great emotional beats safia ingar is constantly being through the ringer in all of these box sets and they do an incredible job in this one this is absolutely their finest hour as a companion the last stand of miss valerie lockwood it's an absolutely superb hour of audio and honestly the ending the third act not only was once again i was kind of on the brink of tears as well there's some immensely satisfying triumphant like punching the air as you're listening to this story moments jacob dudman is outstanding i think that mia tomlinson is terrific as well the chemistry and the back and forth with her and valerie is absolutely sublime it feels emotionally true it's absolutely amazing this is like honestly the epic like bad wolf ending cliffhanger moment you know where the doctor promises to save rose and we have no idea how he's gonna do it but because he promised it's gonna pan out now i'm not going to play any clips from victory of the doctor the synopsis says he told them to run they should have listened and i'm gonna honor the complete lack of spoilers and the complete lack of specifics there and obviously if i play a clip and valerie's there or valerie's not there it's going to confirm or deny all of the stuff and all of the mysteries and i think that you should be listening to victory of the doctor yourself but honestly this is like one of the best overall box sets that big finish have done since i've started doing the reviews and i do not say that lightly this is a 10 out of 10 terrific amazing tour de force box set that i absolutely adored from start to finish like I said, I do think that Didn't You Kill My Mother was a little bit of a shaky start, but it's still a vital and really interesting chapter. And then once it gets going, from Daleks Victorious up until Victory of the Doctor, it honestly, it gripped me and it did not let go. Music's amazing, production design's amazing. Nicholas Briggs' is All of the Daleks are really, like, a really textured performances across the board. And when we get to see the showcases of what the Eternal does, what the Eternal's fate turns out to be, why these separate paradigm Daleks are not going to be in the future of the show after asylum of the daleks and uh, victory of the daleks why did they disappear all of a sudden and this is like the hidden chapter for them it's a really great and satisfying end which still manages to pick up the plot threads and these elements from the very first box set geronimo from a year and a half ago victory of the doctor is absolutely superb sublime storytelling loved it from beginning to end i cannot recommend it highly enough and this is a brilliant end to the, to the 11th doctor's range with jacob dubman and safir ingar they are an absolute incredible power couple in these audio box sets it's probably the best season of doctor who that we never got it's so satisfying it ties up everything so nicely like i said it didn't feel like a cop out for a second and also i just i know that it's a bit reductive to just like thank one particular person but massive thank you just to alfie shaw for like giving us this story giving us these characters giving us what is unambiguous terrific fan service with the paradigm daleks and you know the cyberman conversion story in the last one but like, obviously we're getting these incredible moments of fan service and these great villain showcases but telling a really great standalone story that does the 11th doctor and stephen moffat's vision for that character incredible justice cast a great i really cannot fault like the last three episodes they, they're a massive roller coaster of emotions from bombastic triumphant highs to really somber and incredibly mournful lows it's honestly the complete package an incredible finale one of the best like modern who finales generally like honestly in terms of ranking the revived series it's like bad wolf and the parting of the ways and like victory of the doctors like they're like side by side now incredible stuff genuinely top tier big finish i will be i will eat one of my cats if victory of the doctor is not in my top three box sets of 2024 by the end of the year i i i am that confident it's incredible work and i genuinely can't wait to see what alfie shaw does next like what uh, era of the show he'll put his stamp on next so like honestly just thank you alfie shaw for, for being the the spearhead and the creative conduit one of many i'm sure it's a collaborative process but uh, you know uh I, I you can probably tell that i'm finding it a little bit hard to sort of express uh, my gratitude 
uh, for a range as uh, really, um, really affecting as this that is able to basically like, over the course of four box sets and a bit with broken hearts like always swinging for the fences like always like going full committing to the bit committing to the vibes and like like yeah it's 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 a real like a proper achievement it's it's what i would call like an unambiguous modern classic from big finish if you are an 11th doctor fan you should have been listening to this range yesterday start from geronimo all of time and space don't skip on broken hearts that's the series part one finale for all intents and purposes everywhere and anywhere and victory of the doctor it's pricey but you can get bundles and you should definitely be picking up this range and also maybe try and like listen to the episodes weekly i think that might really help for them as well but yeah victory of the doctor an unambiguous 10 out of 10 of a box set incredible creative team incredible cast and crew loved it loved it it's the this is like a victory for everyone involved and i cannot commend them enough